So when I say this is a hormone to a medicine audience, so a doctor's audience, and I can try to get them to flip their mind a little bit, immediately they're gonna know that you have to do blood levels. And it's the blood level that determines whether the person feels good or doesn't feel good. Also, because of their experience, if they are a general practitioner, they know that too high will give something wrong and too low will give something wrong. In contrast to that, the prospective trials are using the concept vitamin, which means that it's a public health issue. That means when they do the studies, what they do is they recruit 25. This is a very important study that was done and ended in 1999. They recruit 20,000 people and they only do the vitamin D level in two thirds of them. We, we recruited 25,000 people and we published the study claiming that we studied all these people, but only two thirds of them ever had a D level. And the mean D level was 30. That means that some of them had a D level of 50 and they weren't deficient. Others of them had a D level of 10 and they were deficient, but they never actually understand the concept that what you need to do. And unfortunately, there are there is a minority opinion within the literature that understands this concept clearly, that our endocrinologists and other people who have made this jump to it's a hormone. That means if you want to prevent diabetes using vitamin D, what you have to do is say, if I maintain my level between 30 and 40 over a 10 year span, or 40 or 50 or 50 or 60, will I be able to prevent this disease? That's what you must do with a hormone in order to get a good outcome. So the clinical trials that are giving everyone 2000 IUs, but never doing a follow-up D level, never actually having the concept that it must be a level that's maintained. They're not stupid. They're not ill-intentioned. They're really smart but they're running it as a public health issue where they're thinking, oh, this is a vitamin and we just give it to the public. And every other vitamin has a recommended daily dose. This does not because it is a hormone. You can't give everybody the same thyroid hormone dose. You have to see how much they need and you follow up. So it's very helpful when I'm talking to a medicine crowd where I'm trying to get them to flip their thoughts, okay? The other problem is that D and vitamin A are very, very close in their physical structure. They look almost identical. Now, one of the important parts of that is humans made up the name vitamin and hormone and they, and they get stuck on it. Some of them are really things that we have to get from our environment or from nutrition and vitamin A is one of those. But vitamin A also has actions like a hormone. Right. Vitamin A is also linked to our circadian rhythm because light comes through the eye, hits the retina, retinoids, that's what A is. Retinoids then convert that photon energy into another neurologic signal that helps connect us through the brain into a 24 hour cycle. But there's a second chemical that's also light hitting the skin. Once you look at it that way, one's a vitamin, one's a hormone. We make the second one, the D, and we have to make it. Now we're gonna talk about why it's confusing in a minute, but when we make it on our skin then, it's really not made and then stored. The word vitamin has been corrupted and what we're told is it's fat soluble, which is true. And then the next step is we make it in the summer and we store it in the fat and use it in the winter. That is completely incorrect okay. because there is really a D level that is promoting activity. That's the summer level. In that place where my D is, and we can we'll talk about that later, I am building my body. I am going outside and I'm making things and I'm doing things and I'm putting all the calories I eat into making muscle. In the winter D state, when your D is lower, you are dormant. This is the same in plants as it is in animals. This exists on our planet in order to allow us to make it through the winter. So what do you have to do to make it through the winter? One, you like to put on weight in the fall because if you have no food, because there's snow all over the ground and there's no food, you'd like to be able to exist on a lower amount of food. That means D is directly related to the thyroid hormone. It has receptors right in the pituitary. And the way we bring down our metabolic rate is to lower the thyroid hormone, which affects every cell in the body. And it brings us into this dormant state. We don't hibernate like bears do, but in fact, this was designed so that when we were actually somewhere where we're living in our little teepee and you got three wives and 10 kids and you don't get out of that teepee except 
you know, once a week and you have one piece of dried food, it allowed us to survive. It allows every other animal to survive a place, a time when there is no food. 